Blood pressure is one of the major cardiovascular risks, especially in relation to stroke. Essentially, if blood pressure is too high, it puts strain on the walls of our arteries. Fortunately, there are extremely simple aids to help us reduce our blood pressure. Here, now, we're going to discover how black tea might provide a benefit based on an analysis that I actually haven't seen anyone cover before. In this analysis, researchers pooled 11 randomized controlled trials that measured blood pressure, as well as made sure that each study lasted a minimum of one week, although the average duration was six weeks, with some lasting half a year. In addition, participants were instructed to only add black tea in isolation, so not consuming black tea in conjunction with other things. So then we can isolate the effect to black tea alone. The idea behind black tea having a blood pressure lowering effect comes from black tea containing flavonoids like theoflavins, which I'm highly tempted to call teaflavins, as well as catechins. These uh, molecules interact with receptors found on our endothelial cells, so cells that line our blood vessels and control our blood pressure. When these flavonoids bind specialized receptors called G-protein coupled receptors and tyrosine kinase receptors, a cell signal is translated from the outside of the cell into the cell, which ultimately activates a protein called ENOS. This uh, ENOS protein produces nitric oxide, a molecule that is then kicked out of the cell and diffuses into the cells that actually constrict or loosen the blood vessel. Nitric oxide is a well-known vasodilator, so the presence in these cells, called smooth muscle cells, leads to a relaxation of the blood vessels and the reduction in blood pressure as the same volume is now in a larger space. That is one primary mechanism by which flavonoids are believed to affect blood pressure, at least mechanistically speaking. Although there are many other mechanisms, like scavenging for damaging molecules called free radicals. Anyway, that's a bit on the mechanisms, but as you know, if you've been following any of my work of late, mechanisms are great, but they don't tell us about the actual intervention. In this case, black tea, actually, if it provides a blood pressure lowering effect. So if we return to set analysis, we can see the effect black tea consumption has here. We see the uh, data on systolic blood pressure, which is the top number when you get your blood pressure checked. It signifies the highest pressure. And we can see the studies and study arms on the left side and the numerical results on the right. We also see the weights of the studies next to that. And if you want a better education on all of that and what that all means, check out my uh, course on how to analyze and apply studies to your life. For now, just know that the larger the study weight, the more impact it has on the analysis. Then there's the diamonds in the middle. They're worth their weight in data, even if they aren't very shiny, literally. The uh, zero line indicates uh, no effect. And we have a diamond for each study. If they move to the left, that's a blood pressure lowering effect. What we'd expect based on the mechanisms that we just went over. So some studies lean in that direction and you know others don't. So we can make sense of the totality of the data by paying attention to the light gray diamonds at the bottom. As we can see, all the data accounted for, there is a blood pressure lowering effect of black tea, regardless of the statistical method used. That's the uh, random and fixed effects that we see there, with the random effects being the more appropriate considering the Q statistics there. Again, I'll leave that for my course to explain. So, is that it? We found the answer? Well, not quite. You hear that? It sounds like a... Wait a minute. It's a Physionic Insider promotion! No! Cover your ears! Run for the hills! The Physionic Insiders is my premium research platform where I'll be releasing an extended version of this analysis, including more on the types of black tea consumption, more on dosing, and some additional nuances that I won't be able to cover in the video that you're watching right now. So if you're interested in getting access to all my analyses, exclusive videos, written research reviews, a private insider podcast access, and joining in live sessions with yours truly right here, then consider joining the Physionic Insiders. The link is in the description. Whew, okay, I think, 
I think it's safe to come out. Jeez, that was a close one. There's a few issues with this study, and there's also two things that add a lot of context to what we just went over. In brief, the researchers used a less rigorous study bias assessment tool called a Delphi consensus, which is less rigorous than some of the others that are out there. That alone tells us that there's greater risk of bias among studies. The second issue that I'll mention here is that if we pop open the data again, notice the uh, Grassi study here shows up twice. Unfortunately, this is an improper use of the statistics and the data, because if you open the study, it's the same participants. So you're including their data twice, even if the experiment is different. They both measure blood pressure. Basically, this is double counting. The researchers mentioned that they account for this by splitting the weight or impact of the study in half. But this still doesn't address the issue properly. There's another problem with this study that I'll address in the extended version of the video for the insiders because, well, <laughs> I don't want to bog this down with too much statistics. Let's get to the uh, nuances. Okay, one, the researchers cleverly looked at who gets the greatest benefit from black tea consumption, and they indicate that people with high blood pressure experience the most benefit. This is actually consistent with many other analyses that we've looked at here on Physionic. In fact, the second nuance is tied into this too. When considering all the data, the total effect hovers between one and two point drop in systolic or diastolic blood pressure. This is a pretty small effect, but when we consider that studies included non-hypertensive and hypertensive participants were all mixed together, it makes one wonder if the effect might be solely driven by those with hypertension. The researchers argue that their statistical methods should have accounted for this, but they acknowledge that the effect is greater in those with higher blood pressure. So how do we think about all this? Well, the researchers performed a regression analysis to identify how different variables about the people or the conditions affect the results. In fact, in the analysis, they indicated that for every 10 point higher blood pressure at baseline, black tea is linked to about a one point drop in blood pressure. Since the lowest blood pressure was 120 units for systolic 130, so a 10 point increase, would experience on average a one point reduction from black tea consumption. Similarly, 140, so a 20 point increase, would experience a two point and so on and so forth. And this was done up to 150 systolic. So where does that leave us? What are the main take home points here? Well, let me reiterate that this analysis has some flaws. So I'd like to see a better analysis to be absolutely sure. But as it stands, we can lean toward the take home points that black tea reduces blood pressure, but minimally. Black tea is likely a better go-to if you have high blood pressure, anything from 130 systolic and 85 diastolic and up, something like that. Black tea likely won't offer much benefit if you have normal blood pressure. In addition, even if you have high blood pressure, black tea will only provide modest benefits, but benefits nonetheless, and simply drinking a tea, not too shabby. Something that has greater impact on blood pressure and cardiovascular health is located right here. See ya.